Hi, good morning, happy Monday. Today is actually the first day of my maternity leave. I am 38 weeks pregnant now. It took me a very long time to decide when I wanted to go off on maternity leave. I actually wanted to work another extra week until my 39th week, but then Lakshman insisted that I take a longer time off so that I can dress. I'm not the kind of person who would actually sit at home and dress, I refuse to do that. But we came to a middle ground and we agreed that I will stop at 38 weeks. So yeah, Monday morning, I'm up. Didn't have so much to do at all this morning. I went on Instagram. I spent almost an hour on Instagram this morning. I usually don't sit on Instagram over the weekend at all. So this morning I was catching up over the weekend, um, you know, putting up my stories and everything. And then suddenly I thought, why not I vlog this week? So I checked on my Instagram, I asked you guys a question and most of you said yes, why don't you just do a vlog? Because we've got a lot planned for this week. I can't sit still and do nothing at all. And I do have bits and pieces and works here and there to do at home. So I thought I will vlog everything. Um, it will be a good way to document it. It will be nice to go back and have a look at it and I wanted to share it with you as well. Hello, this is Jimmy from the future. I've come back in here to let you know that I've made such a stupid mistake. While editing this video, I realized that I've accidentally wiped out all of my videos from Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. I have no idea how I did that. I started off with very good intentions of vlogging the entire week. And I actually did so much work in that three days, you know. I sorted out my wardrobe, I recorded two different videos. I think I was testing out a steamer and I was talking about a steamer, a garment steamer also. And then I was talking about my antenatal classes and um, nurseries and it's just so many things, you know. And I don't know how I did it, but I've got the first clip that you've just seen. And then the next one that I can see is from Thursday morning. That's it. Everything else from Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday is completely gone. I was so frustrated when I first saw that. And then I was a bit numb and I wanted to scrape the entire thing. But then I figured, um, I checked with some of my friends on Instagram and they were like, you know what, it doesn't matter, you can just go ahead and use it. So I thought, yeah, I will go ahead and use this, but that's what I wanted to explain. So you would have seen the first clip to say that I'm going to vlog the entire week while I'm on maternity leave. But then the next clip that you're going to see after this is going to be Thursday morning. So all I have left is Thursday and Friday of this week, but I still wanted to keep it for keepsake. If you had seen one of my previous vlogs where I was setting up my nursery, you will know that I had set up this entire place about two months ago or so, but I hadn't finished bits and pieces of it because I didn't want to lay everything outside and let it get dusty. I had kept everything in the cupboards. I've already packed my hospital bag now and that's gone into the car as well. And I've got a few bits and pieces. As in, I bought everything, but I just didn't lay it out around the house. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pack my changing bag and I'm going to pack um, the diaper caddy to put in my bedroom and I'm also going to sort out a few bits and pieces around about the house to get the house ready for the baby. So what I've done now is get all of the things that I need that needs to go into my um, changing bag. That's a changing bag that I'm using. This one is from Mamas and Papas. The bag on its own probably cost about £100 on the website but I bought this along with the entire pram set so it was far cheaper that way because I got a very good discount when I bought it on um, during the Boxing Day sale. And these are the things that I'm going to put inside my changing bag. I've got a list on my phone that I've had for quite some time now and then I keep amending and changing and adding on to it. These are the things that I wanted to put in my changing bag so that I don't forget what I need in there. This bag comes with a changing mat and it's got one extra pouch in here and it's got a bottle warmer. I wouldn't need this for the time being so I'm going to keep this away inside the cupboard. It has a few other compartments inside. I did consider buying one of those changing bag inserts but I thought let's just try this first of all and then if I need it I will then get another one. So for now I'm going to try and fit everything in here. I'm obviously going to put things in different bags like a clear bag 
I've got a few clear bags that I saved from some of the other clothes that I bought for the baby. So I'm gonna put some of the baby clothes in here. So you kind of create your own compartment in it. Clear bags are always the way ahead so that you can see what's inside rather than having to open each bag individually. Okay, that's one. And then muslin cloth and bib I'm not going to put into a clear bag so that it's just easier to take out. I'm going to keep that separately. This I got from one of those um, newborn pouches that you get in Asta. So I'm going to try and use this one. Right, depending on how many hours you are out, you need about four to six. I don't estimate that we are going to be going out initially, but I'm just going to put six in it so I don't have to top up very frequently. I didn't even realize that these were so small and so cute. I don't know. I might just put this in. Okay, I'm going to keep it in here and then I'll decide what I want to do with it. I'm going to take this whole pack and this whole pack. I'm not going to repack it, but with this, I'm going to repack this because this comes in 150 in a bag. I don't need that many. And this one, it's got a resealable tag, but it has scented nappy set. So it doesn't look nice when you open it and put it back in. It doesn't contain the scent and it's not easy to take each one individually also. So I'm going to unpack it and I'm going to pack it into one of these dispenser pouches that I bought. Look at what Lakshan has done. This is my kangaroo from the gender scan that we did and he's taken one of those nappies and he's put it on into the baby. I mean the kangaroo. <laughs> This is the nappy caddy that's going to go into my master bedroom. So I've got all of the nappies out here. I've got muslin cloth, two muslin cloth here. And this is the wet wipes and I've got antibacterial wipes. Hand sanitizer over here, nappy cream and the Lancino cream over here. That's all I'm going to keep in my bedroom because this room is just next to my bedroom. And this one's going to be there for like in the middle of the night or when I don't want to wake up. And I've also got a portable changing mat that will go into that room. And while I was waiting for my batteries to charge, remember I showed you this earlier. It comes in a bag of 150 bags in one pack, but it wasn't convenient for you to take out each one individually. So I had bought these nappy sack dispensers where you can put everything, you open it up here, it's like a ziplock thing, you open it up here and then you can open it here and pull one out, you know, each time you want to take one. I've already done one of these and put this in my changing bag. I realized that I would need to do the same for the remaining two bags as well because I'm not going to have time in the future, but because I have time now, I've already put everything in here and these are going to go into the cupboard. So when one bag finishes, I'm going to take this. I won't need nappy sacks for the house, as in I won't need to use it while I'm at home, obviously, only when we go out. So I'm not going to leave these things out. I'm going to put it back in. Let's go into the bin. Once that's done, I need to sort out this area. This has obviously become a dumping ground. This is ideally where I want to keep all of the nappies and the changing stuff and everything that I will use on a daily basis. My diaper changing caddy and that's a mat that needs to go to the room and that's my changing bag that's all in the wardrobe at the moment i don't want it to get dusty so i'm not leaving it outside i'm going to put it inside and this is my changing table so this is my setup at the moment i've put all of the nappies in here this is a pptp this is what you would use when you have boys it's kind of recommended it kind of use this and cover the release when you're changing so that you don't have um, accidents everywhere. I'm just keeping that here to see how that's going to work. 
I've got an antiseptic wipe over there, um, antibacterial wipe and wet wipes over there. This is a table lamp that I got and um, this is some hand sanitizer over here and with this one, that's a rattle. It's one of the gifts from my baby shower and I'm planning on including a few more rattles and a few more handheld toys here that I can use while I'm changing the baby over here just to entertain him. So that's done and I've wrapped it up with a cling film because I don't want it to get dusty. I dislike things getting dusty. That's why I didn't put anything in here for such a long time. But because I'm already 38 and a half weeks at the moment, I'm getting it ready now. And I've put this plastic, um, not fully sealed, but at least it's not going to get as dusty as it was before. And it's not going to be like a dumping ground anymore. This is permanent. It's going to stay as it is. I've got all of my nappy changing cream, um, nappy creams and the other creams and toiletries and everything in here. I wouldn't be needing all of these things immediately and I don't like leaving everything outside. So I'm just going to keep it in here as and when I need it, I'm going to pick it out. Obviously, I'll take it out from the boxes when I start using it. For now, it's still remaining in its boxes. Originally, I didn't want to be a hoarder. I didn't want to keep a lot of things at all. But all of a sudden, I had a thought because this is my first child and it'd be really nice to keep things for keepsake, you know, for good memories and things like that. Um, even when I do have future children, I will do the same for all of them, otherwise it's going to be unfair. What I wanted to do is I wanted a keepsake box. This is something that I got from Estee Lauder. It came with one of their Christmas collections and I never used this box at all. It was sitting in my wardrobe for about two years now and I found it when I was clearing up my wardrobe the other day. So I'm going to use this as a keepsake box for this baby. And I've got all of these cards from my baby shower and I've got my very first um, Mother's Day cards here. And this is a guest book that my mother did for me in Glasgow. So she got um, all of our friends in Glasgow to write their wishes for me and for the baby and for our family because obviously due to lockdown and everything we couldn't meet them we couldn't see them but she got all of them to write it um, in church so I'm going to keep this in here I've also unpacked his bathtub and got it out from the box this is the one I ended up buying I was going to buy the dolphin shaped one from Skip Hop but due to delivery um, and due to the pandemic they couldn't deliver it until the end of May or maybe even beginning of June, I was going to serve as Papa, so I changed my mind and got this instead. This is the aqua bathtub. This one comes with a scale. You can weigh um, with and without the water. What else can you do? Three in one. It has a digital thermometer, it's a tub, and it has a bath scale on it also. I bought a scale, but I returned it because that wasn't all that great. So I can use this instead. I've already got a thermometer. It's this one over here, which I use. I bought that first and I started using it. Only after that did I end up buying this. So I've ended up with an extra thermometer, but that doesn't matter. This one still works. So I've kept it here for now. And um, this bathroom caddy will obviously be used when we start showering him. Um, when we start using his toiletries, I'll put all of those there. And this is the bath mat, the non-slip mat that I would use when I'm having a shower. And this is another thing that I've been up to. I've unpacked the sterilizer box. I got this entire set because it came in a good deal. I wanted a sterilizer. I wasn't going to be using the bottle immediately, but you never know whether you need it immediately or not. It came with all of these things. I didn't realize that it came with this milk dispenser. It's like, I think it's a perfect quantity for each feed. I don't know. I haven't um, really looked into all of those things and then these are some of the bottles. This is a smaller one. That's a bigger one and that's the anti-colic bottle so it comes with that extra extension thing inside. Super easy. There isn't any other fitting whatsoever. Just plug it in, put all of your things, pour water in there, only 80 ml water right at the bottom and then press play to start and this will light up. And it finishes within four to five minutes and if you want to stop halfway press stop and it stops and then you need to restart the entire thing but once it's done the light goes off and it remains sterilized for 24 hours until and unless you open it i wanted to sterilize some of the um pacifiers and some of the plastic things that i had like teethers and everything i wanted to test and see how it was so i did that let me have a look let me open it and show you how it looks like So you've got two layers, that's your first layer, 
and this is the second layer that you can remove. I think I've done enough for the day and I'm super tired already now. So I'm just gonna sit here and chill and change my nail polish. This is the color that I would normally use. It's the SE, I think it's called Ladylike. It's somewhat nude-ish, but I don't know, for some reason, all of the nail polish just keep chipping off really, really quickly. And I've got really brittle fingernails. If you can see through this, this one's already chipped and you can see that my fingernails are quite brittle and it, it's got ridges. I don't know how this has happened. You can even see through the nail polish itself. I've had this for over a year now and I don't really know how to fix it. So I did some research and I found that um, Sally Hansen nail polish is pregnancy proof also. This one is vegan because it's a pure version. It doesn't have the chemicals that you should avoid while you're pregnant and it is a neutral color. This one says it's pink cardamom. I'm hoping this color would be suitable for me because I normally prefer using neutral nail polishes and I found this also which sounded very very promising. It's like double duty. It works as a base coat and a top coat also and apparently it hardens your nails and it smoothens your nails according to the reviews that I saw online. So I'm going to give this a go. I just find it quite embarrassing to not put nail polish on at all because it looks that bad. Happy Friday and happy Good Friday as well. But by the time you're watching this, it's definitely way past Good Friday. So whatever day it is, I hope you've had a very good morning and I hope you have a very good day. Um, I am ready for church now. We're going to church after such a long time and I'm so excited. I haven't seen people in such a long time. I mean, in person, because we keep chatting to people on Zoom, but it's not the same at all, is it? I'm actually due next Sunday, so I've got nine days left for my due date, but this boy doesn't seem to be in any hurry at all, so I registered to go to church today and on Sunday for Easter also. Oh, and I wanted to show you my nail polish. It's slightly more peachy, more salmony than my liking, but I think it seems to be okay. Let's see how long it lasts. Um, I clearly didn't do a very good job with it. I'm quite bad with nail polish, but I still enjoy doing it, so I still do it at home. And I've added a new pillow to my bed. Can you see that in the background? This boy seems to be growing way, way quicker than I expected. Uh, and I'm having terrible back pain, so I ordered another wedge pillow to try and help support. I think it kind of worked. When I used that before, it didn't help at all, so I returned it. But I ordered another one and I used it last night. It kind of did help. Um, I suppose the difficulty is when you're trying to turn. just got back from church and we stopped at a cheeky little vegan cake shop and bought some cakes and came back. Um, the service was really, really nice. It was so good to be able to see people. I was surprised that a lot of people actually had come. We thought not many will come, but obviously a lot of people were looking forward to going to church like we were ourselves. Um, some of them didn't even know that we were pregnant, so when they saw me, they were shocked. And especially when they asked when I was due, people also kept asking us if we were ready, for which I don't know how to answer, truly. I mean, materialistically, I'm ready. My hospital bag is packed, car seat is in the car. You know, we've got our nursery sorted. We've got all of the things and the clothes and everything done, laundry done. Um, I've started my maternity leave and those kind of things ready. But mentally, for labor, for contraction and everything, 
I don't know. I'm just taking it one thing at a time. I think these kind of things, you cannot really be ready or you cannot really be prepared. We're just excited to be able to meet him. We've done our antenatal classes. We've done our reading and everything. <clears throat> So we were like, yeah, we're as ready as we can be, but you can never be ready for these things. Someone also said, um, and I thought it was quite interesting that they mentioned it that way. They were like, oh, you have nieces and nephews, don't you? So you would have had a little bit of experience or you will have an idea of what to do. It's not the same. Even with all of my nieces and nephews, it's just not the same at all. First of all, we hardly get to see them as much as you would see your own children. And secondly, when you have a newborn, you go through the labor experience yourself and then you are left with this baby. You need to care for this baby. You need to feed for this baby. You need to put the baby to sleep. Make sure you keep the baby alive and make sure you provide and protect for that baby. It's so different when you are doing everything. And everyone's experience is very different. No two siblings are the same, they say. You cannot compare own siblings because each one has its own personality and each one is very different so you can't compare your experience with someone else's experience someone else can share as much as they want or as much as they can with their experiences and what worked for them what didn't work for them but whether that's going to work for you or not is an entirely different thing so you can only listen to everything but you can't necessarily take those advices not that you don't want to but it's just that it may not work for you. So it's good to listen to those things and keep it in mind and see what's going to work with your personality and your circumstances and your household basically and your family, especially your baby, whether your baby is going to be able to you know, adapt to that or not. But the one thing that I would always go by is that maternal instincts is true. I would say that I've already started having maternal instincts now because I know when the baby is happy, I know when he's hungry, I know when he's sleeping, I know when he's awake, I know when he's actually uh, responsive to when we talk to him or play with him or I also know when he's distressed, you know. If you already know that while you're pregnant, then surely that maternal instincts will kick even more when the baby is born. Remember I told you on Wednesday that Lakshman said he was going to cut down all of my desserts and sugar because the baby had put on so much weight now. Or maybe even I had put on so much weight so the baby has increased weight by 38 weeks. Um, that didn't happen at all. This was on Wednesday. Thursday night, I had ice cream. We went grocery shopping last night. We ended up buying chocolate eggs because it's Easter weekend. What else did I have last night? I had hot cross bun with chocolate syrup topping. Um, and this also happened today after church. We went in to Earth Cakes. It's a cafe where they sell vegan cakes. We've heard about it for about six to eight months ago now, but we never really had the chance to go at all because it's not near where we live. It's out of the place for us. And because of the back-to-back -back lockdown, it was just never convenient. Every time we wanted to go, they were shut or every time they were open, it wasn't a convenient timing for us to go. Today, since we were in church and this place is quite close to church, it's about 10 minutes away from where we were, we just drove by. We made up our minds that we were going to get one piece of cake each. Um, but yeah, we saw those cakes there and we were so tempted. So we ended up buying four pieces each. Since it's vegan, Lakshman is like, yeah, that's fine. You can have it. And then he called my mother when we came back home and he said, I don't know what to do with this girl. <laughs> I don't know whether it's pregnancy craving or whether I am just being too lenient with her. But to be fair, I've not really had any sort of pregnancy cravings I, I haven't had much pregnancy cravings. The only thing is sugar desserts. That's always been my weakness. Um, and that just heightened during pregnancy, that's all. Especially in the third trimester. I've been wanting desserts and chocolates like every alternate days maybe. About even like five days a week I think. That's, that's how much chocolates and sugar that I've been eating all this while. So we went. We asked that lady for her recommendation. And... These are the things that she recommended. I don't remember which is which, but from bottommost, I think that was a carrot cake. Uh, that's your standard, you know, preferred one with carrot cakes. You can't really go wrong with carrot cake. This is probably the Biscoff one. And then this is the peanut butter and chocolate one. 
And finally, we've got the vanilla caramel. We've never had vanilla caramel before, but apparently vanilla caramel is always their best seller. And then the second one was carrot cake. Uh, the third one was Biscoff and then peanut butter chocolate. But yeah, combination of peanut butter and chocolate, you can never fault it. The same thing with um, Biscoff cake and a carrot cake. So we bought everything. I'm going to try we agreed to have half of everything so we both get to try it so i'm gonna try the first two and then save the next two for later on there's my carrot cake and that's a biscoff cake and it comes with this biscoff thing so half for me and half for lakshman i'm gonna try the carrot cake first i should have probably mixed the vanilla cake with the biscoff first but it doesn't matter it's still i'm still going to eat everything Hmm. Carrot cake is fine. It's a standard cake. It's actually really nice. I think they make it fresh. They made it fresh this morning, so it tastes really good. Mm. We had it in the fridge as soon as we came back, so it's a little bit cold. And the biscoff. Mmm. The biscuit cake is really good. The biscuit's gone a bit soft though because it was in the midst of all of the cakes and it was in the fridge. But other than that, not too creamy, not too sweet. I think it's just nice. I've always loved patisserie Valerie cakes here in the UK. But because of lockdown again, they were shut and they don't do any takeaways at all. So we've not been able to buy that. And we are unsure the kind of egg that they use. So we kind of avoided patisserie Valerie anyway. And also because they were shut. I think I found a good alternative now, a vegan cake now. Okay, I take back what I said about the carrot cake. The first bite was fine. The second bite was fine too. But by the end of it, it felt quite dry and heavy. The carrot cake was heavy and I only had half the cake. So it was really dense though. Um, yeah, the next time I go back to Earth Cakes, I'm not going to take the carrot cake for sure. I feel like Costco's carrot cake is even better than this. So that was out of my list. And the next one was a Biscoff cake. Super sweet. Again, I only had half of it. I stuffed myself with it clearly. Um, I didn't even finish all of the icing. I left out some of the icing. I scraped it out. Really, really sweet. But the cake was soft and nice. So if you're taking only one, then yeah, you could go for the Biscoff. But I think I've had a bit too much cake now. I'm not even going to try the other two, not even one spoon. Too much sugar. Um, since it is really sunny and nice outside, we are going to go out for a walk. Now we figured we would really need to burn some of the calories. <laughs>